art is all around us. This is especially true in the city of Philadelphia where public art permeates just about every corner of the city. In fact, that's why it's called Sculpture City. I'm Ann Ishii and I'm here with Marsha Moss to talk a bit about her work in curating some of the public art in the city of Philadelphia. Hi, Marsha. Hi, and it's good to be here. And, and yes, art is everywhere. That's why we're called the Sculpture City, and that's why our collection in Philadelphia is considered the most respected and largest in the country, and that's quite something. We're very proud of that. Tell us a little bit about why public art is so important for the average Philadelphian. Many people go to uh, galleries and museums, but uh, most people um, don't have that opportunity. And when they take SEPTA as an example and they encounter a dynamic sculpture or an inspiring mural, it really brightens their day. This looks like a headless colonizer. Did you behead? <laughs> yes. We're about to go deeper into the city to learn more about a project that you actually helped shape. Can you tell us a little bit about the Art and Transit program? The Art and Transit program brings people into a state of appreciation of art, not on the ground level or in museums, but an unlikely place, underground. It brings an excitement and stirs the imagination and we try to have artists who represent the community in which the station is. My first stop will be right here under City Hall, where artist Ray King is going to tell us a bit about his light installation, Felix Love of Light. What I've done here is created an installation using illuminated colored glass panels that are on either side of the rail line, and there are a series of seven columns on either side, seven here and seven on the other side. We use the map from 1910, from when the subway was built, uh, which was a major feat for Philadelphia to, you can imagine, digging these massive chasms through the streets and installing this train line underground. So that was one of the early subways that was installed in the world. And this honors that subway history and also the grid of the city. These are actual streets of the city itself. And those are made of a holographic mylar film that's laminated inside the glass. And there's a little key to understanding this in that there is a famous 18th century scientist, David Rittenhouse. The connection that I have with him is I use light and I use diffraction of light and filters, etc. But he defined diffraction of light into color in 1780 here in Philadelphia. No one really fully understood it until he made that discovery and defined it. In a manner of speaking, you are a Ray King. <laughs> right, I guess I landed with this name, so it's kind of evolved into a refined idea, an ideal of what I do now as professionally. I'm heading east to Independence Mall, where artist Tom Judd displays his interest in the history and the design of cultural artifacts. Doors are closing. We're meeting by Constitution Hall, where the birth of American democracy is commemorated with the Declaration of Independence. You have created a historically kind of peculiar tableau of work, kind of nodding to the imagined history of this country. I do love historical things, but I'm not a historian. When I approached this, I spent a lot of time looking at old paintings reading about this time, but not really from the point of view of getting the story right, but really just to get a narrative. You're looking for a narrative. Yeah, a narrative, yeah. yeah. You've gotten some interesting trivia in your research with historians. Well, it was an interesting time because at the same time the Constitution was getting written, you had slavery, and Philadelphia was a very liberal city around slavery and very much a part of the Underground Railroad. So I wanted to capture some of the contradictions of the time. For instance, this is Ona Judge, who was Martha and George Washington's slave, who actually escaped oh, wow. and moved to New Hampshire. And they actually went after her, trying to get her back. She never came back, and 
She went away and had a family and had a life. Good Pretty interesting story. Yeah. <laughs> There's some funny depictions of historical figures here. This looks like a headless colonizer. Did you behead yes, <laughs> a historical had, figure? No, actually, I was really just playing around with the fashion of the day, so to speak. It's really interesting what you've done here, kind of putting picture frames on an exterior wall. You know, when you work in your studio, you do pictures that are then put on walls, where this, you're dealing with the architecture of the place. So one of the things I did here was I have exterior windows that are actually photographs of real exterior windows from Philadelphia houses, because I felt like the brick wall looked like an exterior wall. We covered those stainless steel doors with photographs of real doors mm -hmm. to give the illusion that it was an old door that you were seeing walking down the sidewalk. That seems to embody the spirit of creativity, just trying things until it feels right. Until it feels right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's exactly how it went. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. We're headed to West Philadelphia, approaching the 46th Street Station, where L Dancers, a towering sculptural installation, greets train riders coming out from the underground. We're visiting artist Barbara Bullock at her home studio to hear more about her work and this dance-inspired piece. Your work, El Dancers, is such a great example of how public art really connects to a community and a neighborhood. I love dance, and I worked with different dance companies, and I was in the art department, but I was constantly doing drawings of the dancers. Mm. And the thing that I loved about them was that they had such discipline, and the dance had so much power, and it was cultural. There's something very energetic about the movements, the layers, the colors. And I think it's nice to think about people moving through the subway as a form of dance as well. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to talk about the energies of the dance and the different types of dance. And also, I wanted it to be an upper to the people that use that 46th and Market Street station. You making this work is also just opening a wide door for people who are trying to understand how they can share in public art. Yes, definitely. We hope you enjoyed this underground trip through Philadelphia, where we caught just a glimpse of art in transit. There's so many stations to check out, so take a look around at your next stop.